since uh, Turing back in the 40s and the 50s when he created the first computer, the idea was that we could use this technology to actually automate processes um, that were until then just things that we thought we could only do with our mind. For example, um, at the beginning it was doing s uh, large calculations. This is something, a technology that is now no longer just replacing or augmenting physical things, but augmenting cognitive processes. So technology to automate processes that were until then the exclusive domain of the human intellect. Huge difference. I just given a prize to a kid of 18 years old that has discovered something really very, very unique. Came up with how to get better productivity and better yields for seeds of corn. And so he basically came with the idea that if you would perforate these seeds, you would get more food. And uh, you think about it and say, but he didn't go to university. So how does he get all that knowledge? And he told me, I mean, I've been watching YouTube since the age of 12 and I'm so interested that I've seen everything about it. I've read everything about it. The world is really open uh, to learning. The thing is, uh, how do you give the incentive to your kids to do that? Computers are actually beginning to master human language with techniques that are similar to the neocortex. I uh, actually described the algorithm, which is similar to something called a hierarchical hidden Markov model, something I've worked on since the 90s. Uh, Jeopardy is a very broad uh, natural language game, and uh, Watson got a higher score than the best two players combined. Uh, it got this query correct, a long, tiresome speech delivered by a frothy pie topping, and it quickly responded, what is a meringue harangue? And Jennings and the other guy didn't, didn't get that. There won't be a clear distinction between humans and machines. Our computers are not going to be these rectangular devices we put in our pocket. They're going to be inside our bodies and brains, and we're going to be a hybrid of biological and non-biological intelligence. Twenty years from now, we'll have nanobots, because another exponential trend is the shrinking of technology. They'll go into our brain, into the, through the capillaries, and basically connect our neocortex to uh, synthetic neocortex in the cloud providing extension of our neocortex. Now today, I mean you have a computer in your phone, but if you need 10,000 computers for a few seconds to do a complex search, you can access that for a second or two in the cloud. In the 2030s, you need some extra neocortex, you'll be able to connect to that in the cloud directly from your brain.